Good day, everyone. Welcome to another lecture video in preparation for our midterm examination. This time, we are going to be talking about subject matter in the arts. So what we are going to do now is going to discuss what subject matters are and how they are able to produce you know, arts that stand the test of time. So in this particular lesson, we are going to be discussing how, in this case, figurative versus non-figurative subject matter is a very huge offshoot to our discussion. Hence, we have representational versus non-representational art. So let's first discuss figurative or representational art. This means that the subject of the artwork is derived from real sources, such as in the Muravin by the 17th century by Johann Anton Eismann, wherein work is in the public domain. So if you're going to see this particular artwork, makita nimo that it is really a representation no, of what is seen in the real sources or what is depicted in the real sense sa actual gyud nga paghitabo. Hence, kung may yung figurative or representational art, maon ni siya ang nahitabo sa realidad. You know, this is derived from real sources. Meanwhile, if we are going to talk about non-figurative or non-representational art, otherwise known as non-figurative or abstract, this refers to any art without any strong reference to the real world. Again, without any, take note, strong reference to the real world, such as Le Premier Disc in 1913 by Robert Delaunay or Delaunay, wherein work is in, yeah, wherein if we are going to see, it is a, a, kada bitang, uh, bullet, uh, no, 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 target mark, yeah, you yeah, a marking of a target, pero it is not really, it does not have any strong reference to the real world. Now, when we talk about subject matter of art or subject matter in art, we're going to base it on those two um, concepts, figurative and non-figurative, representational versus non-representational art. Hence, if you are going to discuss now no, what are shows a scene or what shows a scene in okay, so first we discuss landscape. Landscape usually shows a scene usually from nature to rural, pastoral, and idyllic places. A landscape painting or drawing refers to an artwork whose primary focus is natural scenery, such as mountains, forests, cliffs, trees, rivers, valleys, etc., etc., such as the view of Toledo by El Greco, wherein the image is on public domain. Makita niyo that's called landscape painting or drawing. Another example is some paint in a naturalistic manner to reflect the visual beauty of the subject, while others create an idealized version of the subject. Some exaggerate or distort elements of the scene for expressive effect, and others paint scenes of total fantasy, which are the constructs of their own imagination, such as the Chateau at Madan by Paul Cezanne. The now ni modi arre di li juke shay ngon abstract, pero in reality, this is really you know naturalistic manner in reflecting the subject or reflecting you no know, the subject that creates an idealized version of the of the same subject, the like river bank, a cliff. Trees, forests. So basically, this is still an example of landscape uh, painting. However, it is more naturalistic and it is subdued to the idealized version that is constructed out of the imagination of the painter or the artist. Some exaggerate or distort elements of the scene for expressive effect, just like what was mentioned, and others paint scenes of total fantasy which are the constructs of their own imagination, just like the Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. Wherein, of course, if you're going to look at the sky, clouds. but then again, it is still part strongly referred to the real thing or the real basis. You know? But then again, the paint scenes wherein it is somewhat like fant uh, fantasized you know? out of their own imagination. A seascape, on the other hand, is a photograph or painting or other work of art which depicts the sea. In other words, an example of marine art, 
The word originated as a formation from landscape, which was first used on images of land in art. So a seascape uh, tells us that it depicts the sea, the boats, the boat docks, and the piers, such as the wave in 1882 by Pierre Auguste Renoir. Okay, another example of the seascape is this: a boat, a dagat, a pier, a sauna, siguro. Pero kanao ni mo actually koy koy nga paint. The sunrise impression by Claude Monet. It is also called marine art or maritime art, kasi nga it is a figurative art that portrays or draws. It's main inspiration from the sea. You know, it's like river back, but then again, it's still part of the ocean. Maritime painting is a genre that depicts ships and the sea, a genre particularly strong from the 17th to the 19th centuries. paintings that depicts the sea, because it was more you know, interesting in their time, because that was the first voyages that they took to the ocean. Okay. Another seascape or marine painting very beautiful artwork christ in the storm on the lake of galilee by Rembrandt. this was when the in the bible diba? christ calmed the storm by commanding the uh, commanding the water etc etc this was made by rembrandt so if you're going to look at the painting it really depicts that, that there was Kana bitang a store, kasi nga ni action tagili dang ilahang boat, and then Christ commanded the sea to calm down. That's when this, the, the cloudy skies of the storm opened up, and then sun came in, etc. etc. So there are different analytical views that you can create out of watching a particular artwork. Okay? Another is still life. Wherein this conforms to the notion or to the maxim natura morta, or literally means dead nature. Still life refers to work whose subject matter are natural objects and whose forms are arranged deliberately, like a basket of fruits, a porcelain cup, or textile with a bunch of flowers. Traditionally, still life is the drawing and painting of items such as fruit, flowers, and household objects, which are usually arranged on a tabletop. Kasi nga, still, no movement or action is made for true. Such as the allegory of the vanities of human life by Harman Stinwick. So there is there a samurai, a skull, a heater, there's a notebook, seashell, a jar, etc. Et now, if you're going to talk further about this, uh, Artworks, no. We have portrait. Uh, by the way, class, we are we are still focusing on the subject matter. Huh? Hence, there are only different ways of portraying it. Another is the portrait. This is the painting of the human figure. But when a portrait, gani, it's it's really kind of the human subject that is the the main idea or the main subject. The painting. The earliest examples of individual portraits in art come from ancient Rome and are mostly painted with tempera or encaustic on a wooden panel. Portrait painting, as we understand it today, evolves from the Renaissance portraiture. Artists create portraits of individuals and groups to express the beauty, the status, the power, the wealth, or the character of their subjects, such as the self-portrait in a velvet dress by Frida Kahlo. So you can you can depict a lot of things such as beauty, status, power, wealth, etc. etc. Okay. Now, in continuation with portrait, artists use a wide range of media for portraiture, including drawing, painting, a sculpture, photography, and multimedia. Nowadays, it is more of uh, photography, multimedia. Painting is as rare as it was common creando. The self-portrait, which first became popular during the Renaissance, is an intimate and revealing form of the genre. Rembrandt and Vincent van Gogh are the most prolific painters of self-portraits, both producing around 40 works that chart their life as an artist. So this is um, Vincent van Gogh in his self-portrait, Ayan Limo. Okay, so this is also a very, very 
um, important piece of the subject when we talk about subject matter in art, it is talking about history as well. History depicting historical scenes, usually stylized and made to look heroic. Take note, made to look heroic, but it does not depict what was literally, you know, being done during those times. Because you know, everybody was at war. War photographers were very minimal at that point. Say, for example, liberty leading the people in 1813 by Eugene Delacroix is not really depicting what was, but it depicts based on the narratives of the people. And if you're going to look at this, it really looks very heroic. No, because it talks about the historical um, aspect and nature wherein people claim or people cling to a woman, you know, to lead the people. That's why they have the Statue of Liberty. That's actually, that's this is actually basically the history of the Statue of Liberty and that they led or she led the people to freedom. That's why they call it liberty, liberation, etc. etc. Another is the Raft of the Med or Raft of the Medusa by Theodore Perico. So if you're going to look at this, again, this is made to look heroic. If you're going to analyze it, you know, there are death, there is a victor, and there are different sceneries. So it's it's really talking about tragedy. Sila sa ba? And then they came from very kinangamate sa kilid, etc., etc. And then, of course, you also have religion where the subject matter is is in the in the intention is for the service of religion. It depicts religion, such as the creation of Adam by Michelangelo. Pero di ba, in the video that I made you watch, there was a conspiracy theorist that said that uh, God here has depicted forms or this this image of God here with the angels, etc. Form what seems to be like the human brain, wherein it is it is argued by conspiracy theorists that the notion or the concept of God is a is a product or is a byproduct, a result of the thinking of man. So wala gido ko na gino o na gido na siya sa tomo na una. So those are what atheists are trying to argue. Okay. Another is that subject in art talks about the allegorical and symbolic scenes, wherein mythology and ancient stories seem to come to life. Allegory in art is when the subject of the artwork or the various elements that form the composition is used to symbolize a deeper moral and or spiritual meaning such as life, death, love, virtue, justice, etc., etc. Most of the representations for this subject in art is in ancient stories and myths, such as the Narcissus by the Caravaggio. So, mirrors, it was not really prominent. So they would look at river streams, river banks. And then, if you can see the, the artwork here, Narcissus by Caravaggio, you're going to see the subject looking at himself intently almost all of the time in the river bank. Kasi nga, it's narcissistic. Wapuhan siya sa sarili, so sigira siya tanaw sa sarili. Nowadays, if you're going to look at this, it is now transmitted to, or it is now transformed into the manner of us taking pictures. Kaya nito, masigit ka nalang picture, kasi nga, kung wapo ka sa yung sarili, or gandang ganda ka sa yung sarili, so sige kang selfie, sige kang my day, sige kang post to social media, etc., etc. It's still the same act, just like what the painting is doing. It's just that it is now convened in a very different platform, in a very different medium because of the advancement of technology. Okay. Say, for example, we also have another very interesting one. Genre painting, the everyday life, usually showing the rural scenes of planting, harvesting, feasting, and celebrating, such as Night Hawks by Edward Hopper. Yeah, this is in the Art Institute of Chicago. Makita niyo di ari genre painting. It depicts what is common. Say for example, night walks. So sabi nito ng mga gabii na ay kananan or cafe nga open, and then there are people who would lounge and you know have dates and meet other people there, etc. While the other places in the streets, mingaw na kaya nagtuk da mga tao, etc. So that's an example of such. Another though. Uh, aside from genre painting, this is also intimate scenes, also shows intimate scenes from daily life 
where it, it is invariably the subject of genre painting. The elimination of imaginative content and of idealization focuses attention upon the shrewd observation of types, costumes, and settings. Genre painting is a form of genre art where it depicts aspects of everyday life by portraying ordinary people engaging in common activities such as uh, Tinikli. The, this was in 1951 by Fernando Solo. This was an image taken by the Kahinyang Project. Tinikling, of course, is one of our folk dances in Imonisha, an old town, barrio setup of Philippines, right? So, again, as what we have said, it is depicting aspects of everyday life by portraying ordinary people engaged in common activities. Okay. As a general rule of thumb, a genre painting is typically a portrayal of normal events in which individual figures usually play an important role. Genre art is the pictorial representation of, in any of various media of scenes or events from everyday life, such as markets, domestic settings, interiors, parties, and scenes and street scenes, such as the legal one by Fernando Solo. So, sabi nito, it is the portrayal of normal events wherein individual figures are or usually play an important role. So can you add to during their times in the 50s and in the 60s, even animal get a big one, di ba? Na sila sa palay, na nanong sila, and then ay babae, all dressed regally, na lalaki, na katulog pa mainit, etc., etc. So this was really depicting what was Liga one back then in the 60s and in the 50s, even in the, in the ancient times of the Philippines. Okay, so when we talk about uh, subject in uh, subject matter in arts, it is really regarding or it is really dwelling into how subject matters are being presented, how subject matters are dwelled into depending on the discipline that you have, the discipline that you wanted to convey. In the sense that when you look at subject matters, you need to analyze the entire picture, the entire the entirety of the artwork, not just the subject per se, because there are different elements that are present and you can have different interpretations of those elements, depending on how you were able to comprehend or analyze the subject matter in that particular art piece. So that's our lesson, subject matter in art. Stay tuned for more lecture videos in preparation for the midterm examination. God bless and good day to everyone.